Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. So in this episode, we are going to continue our discussion around lambda layers. So in the previous one, uh, we already discussed about lambda layers. What is lambda layer? Why are we using that? And how to do that using a small example. But when we are actually using lambda layers in our real world projects, there are several concerns that we might have to address. For example, local development. So if you are working with a team, your developers should be able to uh, develop locally even with lambda layers. So the lambda layer shouldn't be a barrier for that. So that is one of the issues we are going to discuss how to uh, overcome. And secondly, uh, I told you in the previous video, when you update a lambda layer, uh, there's a version, a new version will be created. Uh, in other words, lambda layers are immutable. The previous one is not going to replace by the new one. So uh, if you want to do an update to a lambda layer, then that version number has to be updated and all the lambda functions that refer that particular lambda layer must be updated as well. So you see there's a, a bit of a admin uh, overhead. So we'll talk how uh, we can avoid this admin overhead as well. So these are the two main uh, things that I'm going to uh, discuss within this video. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the video and see how this can be done. All right, guys. So I have a blog post written for this episode as well. So it's called Lambda Layers Tips and Tricks. And you can follow along. I have added the uh, code pieces as well. So let's start with the first issue. That is setting up local development. So uh, now I go into my code. So this is the one that we have been using in the previous uh, episode. The one that I introduced the Lambda Layers. So there we have two services. So I'm using serverless. Uh, so serverless YAML file is there for layers folder as well as we have another serverless configuration on the YAML file for to do service. Now all my layers I have added into this layers folder. So if I open up this serverless.yaml file in the layers folder, you can see there's section for layers. So at the moment I have this login layer and you can find the path for login in the same directory. Uh, here we have the login directory and inside that I have node.js and node modules directory and then again the login and finally I have my code. So in my login code it's nothing but returning some hello from YouTube uh, text. And afterwards what we have done is we have deployed this uh, lambda layer and in my to-do service in the serverless.yaml file I have referred that particular layer using the uh, layer ARN. But when we are developing locally, we don't have that lambda execution environment. So how are we going to reference this layer code? So that's the, our first issue that we are going to solve. Now if I go back to my blog, under local development, what we can do easily is add a dev dependency. Now let me go to my to-do service. At the moment, I don't have any package.json file. So I will navigate to that folder, to-dos. Then I'm going to npm init dash y. So this will create a package.json file for me. Here we go. Now I will add a section for dev dependency. Let me copy it from here. Now let me actually show what exactly is the error that we get. So right now I am in my to do's folder. So let's try to execute this code. You can see in my handler.js, uh, I'm requiring that login uh, dependency just like I am requiring any npm dependency but right now uh, since we don't have that code in this folder uh, it's going to give me an error so let me show you that I will comment out this module.export code instead I will console log login.log function so now I will run node handler.js and hit enter then we get the error cannot find the module login this is because my local code do not have access to the lambda layers. So how can we fix our local development? For that, we will add this dev dependency block and then I'm going to add a package called login. And then I will refer the layers code using relative paths. So let me go into my blog and I will copy this uh, particular code. So you can see right now I'm here. So I'm going one directory up so I will go into the layer folder and then instead of db it is login 
so this directory then node.js that's right uh, node module so right uh, and again this login uh, directory save it now let me run npm install let's see if this all right now I get an error called could not install from this particular path because it does not contain a package.json file so why not we go ahead and create that package.json file so I will go into my layers so let me take another terminal so I will go into layers node.js node modules and login hit enter then I see my index.js file so here also I will create and package JSON file npm init dash y. Let me refresh it. There we go. I have a package JSON file. Now I switch back to my previous terminal where I got that error. Then I will try again running npm install. So it has run correctly. Now if you inspect the folder you can see there's this node module folder has been created and npm has linked this login code or copy that login code into this to do folder itself. Now uh, let me show you the npm version I am running npm dash v so it's 6.1.13 so with this now I should be able to run my handler js code. Let me check that. There you go hello from YouTube. So it works so now I can develop locally. Now since these are dev dependencies they are not being pushed to production or AWS Lambda. So on AWS Lambda it will use the original layers but on local development it will use dev dependencies. Cool. So let's get into our second issue which is updating layer versions when we are updating the layer code. Now if I open this uh, to do serverless.yaml file you can see in my Lambda function I am referencing the layer by its ARN. Now you can see this is the sixth version of login layer. But the problem here is guys, if I go back to my uh, login serverless.yaml file and if I go ahead and do a SLS update, but before that let me change this hello from YouTube. I will change it to edit. So this is my lambda layer code here inside. I will go to layers and I will do SLS deploy let me set the stage to test one and let's deploy this all right so my lambda layer is updated and I got the new ARN or the new lambda layer version ARN here so it is uh, login 13 so now if I want to use this code in my lambda so I have to go back to my to do service go to serverless yaml then I have to update this 6 to 13 and then redeploy this service you see there are like couple of manual steps so I have to copy this one or the new uh, login layer version ARN and come back here paste it and then uh, SLS deploy this to do service now there's a one alternative option which which is that we can put this into a SSM or a parameter store variable and refer that parameter store still again once we have done an update uh, the parameter store variable has to be updated with the latest version and then redeploy everything so you have to copy and paste that value in the parameter store but we can like reduce one more steps this copy pasting or updating this version manually that can be achieved using CloudFormation cross tag variable referencing so that's what this is uh, written here I have to first export the lambda ARN or the lambda layer ARN rather from my uh, lambda layer service so in order to do that I will have to add a new section in my serverless YAML called resources so let me go into layers and serverless YAML hit enter and paste this part so this is basically creating some cloud formation output variable or output values. So here under outputs in the blog it says database layer export but instead it should be in my case let's rename it to login layer export. The value reference is a little bit special value. Now you can see my layer name is login. So what I can do here is I can copy this same login and paste here and make it 
Pascal case. So login start with capital L and then lambda layer is the suffix. So you can put this lambda layer suffix. So in order to create this reference value, you take the layer name login and make it capitalized and add the suffix lambda layer. Now I will have this export uh, name as well. So this is required in order for you to reference across uh, CloudFormation stacks. So I will add this export name as well. So ideally what we are doing here is once we deploy this lambda layer, then that particular layer ARN, which is referenced from login lambda layer, will be output in that CloudFormation stack. Then we will go to our to-do service here. And instead of this hard coding login ARN or, or the login layer ARN, let me take that out and go back to my blog. And I will use this CloudFormation input statement. I come here and paste that in. So it's basically referencing my layer service. Now this layers is coming from my layer service name layers. It's layers. Then self dot provider stage give me the stage whatever the stage that is being set. So this uh, serverless variable. So here I don't have to actually hard code this value here. Instead replace this with this uh, variable. So this again a serverless variable. So what it says is first look out for this value. If it is not use dev as the default value. So what is this opt colon stage? So that is basically when we are deploying the serverless service, we type SLS deploy and I can add a flag called stage Manoj or whatever the stage. So if this stage is added, then it will use this Manoj as my stage otherwise if I don't uh, include anything here it will use uh, the dev as the default stage so you can like have this replaced here so you can have multiple environments and there won't be any conflicts by referencing those lambda layers in those multiple environments so okay so layers and the stage and then let me go to my layers again this should be my output key name here the login layer export let me replace this so now what will happen is if I update this layer if I go to this layer here and instead of YouTube hello from AWS save it let me check which directory I am I I'm in the right directory as it seems now I will deploy this layer SLS deploy and here also I will add the same notation or the same command for stage. All right. So now I can pass any stage name AWS. So you can have any stage name, production, dev, whichever. Oops, I got this stack uh, limit exceed error. I think I have more than 100 stack. Let me clear a few and come back. Okay. Let's try this again, clear screen and SLS deploy dash 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 AWS. So it seems to be okay, let me see. Okay, now you can see the stack uh, creation is completed, layers dash AWS. Now if I go to output section, well still it's processing, let's wait for a while. And you can see the update is in progress now. Okay, it seems to be completed. So let's come here and uh, refresh it. Cool. Now I can see my login layer export key is added and also the export uh, name is login lambda layer. Now since this export variable, I can reference it from any other stacks. So now let's go to to-do service serverless.yml and then redeploy this service. SLS deploy dash dash stage AWS. Now, ideally, my to do service should be able to reference my layer service cloud formation and access that login layer export key, thereby import the ARN of the latest Lambda layer version. Let's see if that succeeds. So, if everything works well, I should see this hello from AWS message. Alright, it's completed. So let's go into this API Gateway URL and 
see the message. Oops, I got an internal server error. Let's check this. I will go to handler.js. Yes, exactly. Because I need to uncomment this code. And let's do a redeployment. We commented earlier to test the local development, but we need that right now. Okay, so it's updated. So let's check this again. I will refresh it. There you go. Hello from AWS. Perfect. Now with this configuration, I don't have to manually update the Lambda layer version whenever I have done an update to the Lambda layer. Okay, so this is what I want to cover in this video, guys. I'll see you soon.